So here we are waking up in 400i uh, that will be released in 315. This is the competitor to the Constellation. Doesn't compromise cargo for vehicle storage. It's faster, more agile than the Connie, and it can run with a smaller crew. So this is the captain's quarters, and then we'll go out and see a little bit more of the habitation deck, and then make our way to the cockpit. So this would be the social area that you can meet and eat and, and basically plan your next mission. And then from here, we'll go to the cockpit. So here we're over Pyro 3. Um, we've come here for a mission to acquire an artifact. Um, and uh, you'll be making your way down to a trading post. So wanted to uh, just give you a quick overview and then we can start talking about the planet. Yeah, Pyro 3 is, um, yeah, just a, a terrestrial planet. It has a very thin, uh, breathable atmosphere, uh, but it's still pretty inhospitable, very cold. Uh, as you can see, some of those lightning strikes in the clouds, but, uh, but yeah, very, very pretty looking. So this is uh, the first time we're actually seeing clouds above uh, a terrestrial planet. You know, we went through quite a few iterations of uh, forms. Uh, what we ultimately ended upon was something that felt quite, uh, uh, quite dramatic, uh, still believable in terms of uh, how the wind would have shaped them. Um, but yeah, like uh, it's showcasing a lot of the, the, the more recent um, tech uh, that came online. Uh, also, what we're seeing here is like some kind of distant thunder strikes. And what this is, it's uh, kind of like a prelude to, you know, future uh, weather features that we come on board, you know, and how this will tie into, you know, uh, storms and uh, ship handling, you know, due to the turbulence. And it's great seeing the, um, you know, the rain hit the canopy glass here, you know, when you go through these cloud banks. Also, as part of the, the process of shaping, one of the things we really wanted to do is create these uh, these kind of like these pockets in between the clouds. So you're in these cavities. So as you're flying through, you get glimpse of the, the terrain beneath you. Uh, but, you know, it, it feels really quite exhilarating, you know, to fly through. Also as well, like um, it's showcasing a lot of the more recent uh, tech coming on board as well. So, you know, um, you know, it's, uh, a lot of optimizations been going on, uh, so it's way more performant than previously uh, than previously it was. Also, like the the level of artifacting that we're seeing here is is substantially reduced, uh, certainly on higher spec machines. It also gives you a great sense of parallax when you fly through these these cloud sandwiches. A cloud sandwich? Yes, that's that, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're the meat uh, or the the cheese of a cloud sandwich. The cheese of a cloud sandwich. So as we get out of the cheese, uh, another really big feature that was important uh, for me was, uh, you know, terrain, uh, terrain shadowing and terrain occlusion from the clouds. So uh, you're actually seeing, you know, these uh, large areas of occlusion uh, cast onto the terrain. And it's, um, it just adds that depth. It just adds that believability to uh, what we're seeing in the frame. And you know, when you see like these over, like dark overcast, uh, over, overcast clouds and they're hovering above the mountains, it 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 finally completes the uh, the frame. Especially when you see these distant rumbles of uh, thunder in the distance. So James Cameron, who's doing the 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 run through yes that is his name um he will be taking us down to the outpost uh the goal for us is to basically make 50 of these whether they're inhabited or derelicts or or even um basically inhabited by a a, a farmer or inhabited by a gang so the goal is to have these act as different factions and so that you can develop different rep associated with them. Um, and you can start seeing how big these outposts uh, stretch to with the, the comms tower that's behind us. And then even some of the AA turrets that you'll actually see up close and personal.
That was a really good approach uh, from James there. Uh, good landing. That was a good solid three out of ten. Three out of ten. Jeez. I, 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 Ian's a tough grader. Yeah, I go six at least. No one's ever got a six. You gotta watch me land, man. So here we'll go down to the technical deck. Show off the cargo area as well as the climate controlled um, component areas and then onto the gravity generator room and the stairway out. Um, so you'll be able to learn more about the ship in one of the later panels that we have with Ben, Paul, and John. Um, I think the team did a great job on this. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite skins. Yeah. Yeah, they did a, a new skin, just um, just something that felt a lot more, you know, suitable for Pyro. But you, know, you can see how it, it, you know, it feels suitably worn and, and weathered, um, you know, to fit into these these climates and you know what we're seeing here is first, first boots on the ground you know on pyro uh, i think it looks great uh, especially in, in in contrast to what we're seeing here is like actual ai on the train you know walking about going about their business um and is that an ai turret there it is and radio comms towers and all these other elements that we want to make sure that are interactive for the player and allows them to go and explore or use as uh, use to their advantage. Um, we want them to be able to interact with these these different items. Here you can see like uh, various outpost modules. You know, to the right there, we've got the garage unit. You can see the infrastructure on the roof. But this large, beautiful you know archway here kind of signifies you know the main entrance, the primary entrance to the the main social module. I think the air looks look great. You no, know, fits in with the art style beautifully. The team did a great job on this. And then uh, we've seen the concept art previously in the day, and then you know here you can see it translated uh, in game. I, I think it absolutely looks fantastic. You know, uh, the radial forms, you know, is, is quite uh, quite special to this art style. Um, and you can see the, how that, that complements these archways that lead into other areas of the outpost. So it, with the AI, we want to make sure that it's living, it's breathing. Um, if you look back a little bit, there was a chef actually cooking. Um, there's security guards here to make sure that they're actually protecting their investments, protecting their home uh, from strangers. And then, uh, but you have good rep with them and uh, so they allow you to kind of enter into certain areas that you, the other players wouldn't be able to enter into. We also got a, a quick shot at the, uh, the loadout that James is playing. So it's a female loadout, but it's also showing the, um, the backpack, uh, which is new. Also, they want some of the new hair as well, which is rendering much nicer. So here the player will make their way out to the training post. Um, go see the dealer, acquire the artifacts. And for the for the trading post, you know, we wanted to get all of the, the junk on the outside as well, uh, you know, so the player can see it as they're approaching. Uh, we wanted, you know, as many tops as we could, and you can see it's using the new soft deck shader. So these are reacting to the planetary wind, uh, you know, the same the same force that the, the, the tall grass and the moss in the ground is reacting to as well. Other thing with the trading post is, like Ian spoke about before, um, the inventory and, and what they'll be able to actually sell here will vary depending on um, where they're at in the solar system. Are they close to uh, a jump point where they might be coming down and using this as a chop shop? Or uh, are they in a very rural area that you know, they care more about um, the frontier lifestyle and being able to survive versus money? We, uh, we passed the kitchen as well on the way back there. That's the, that's the local diner uh, for this outpost. 
tough crowd. <laughs> uh, also, so in the inside as well, you know, we wanted this, you know, kaleidoscope of, of uh, colors and shapes. Um, you know, like it's just literally the, the dealers displaying all the wares, everything they'll have uh, outside in the open here. Well, welcome. Take a look. I'm sure I have what you want, and if not, I'll have something just as good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, very good choice. Very good. So after five million credits of disposable income, we get our first look at the uh, 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 Hadesian artifact, which is obviously going to be what is sort of a super rare uh thing that you'll you know, hopefully be able to start finding in the, so in the galaxy uh, deal deal. which is sort of if you're familiar with the lore of Hades was an old civilization that destroyed itself uh, so somehow this trader has gotten their hands on uh, this artifact so here we're showing one way of actually playing through this area uh, it really depends on your standings within the gang and how they want to deal with you and then it, what's the dealer going to do? What's the dealer going to charge you? And from there, we have different ways of actually showing um, this. And, and we can look at option two now. So here we're going to run it back um, a little bit and show off a, a different way of entering into the trading post this is a little bit more straightforward versus the in, in demo one we we took a side route through uh the social area so yeah this is just some additional warehouse space that the trading post would have uh and you can see it will lead directly onto the this courtyard um and for the keen eyed uh people you'd see that the barbecue is still not uh being eaten yet the grill master would be fired yeah Still full of weenus. So with this area again, we just want to make sure that it's filled out with items, filled out with different things that you can interact with and possibly buy. Um, it, it's like Dave said in the beginning, um, we want the stores to feel different here, uh, but it's it's still making it feel believable. Quick reference to some uh, additional traversal areas there on the right when we came in. Well, welcome. Take a look. I'm sure I have what you want, and if not, I'll have something just as good. Yeah. The guys had a lot of fun. Uh, addressing these areas. Uh, there's a lot of storytelling going into it. So here, we decide not to pay the price. Um, and we want to... We don't mind um, losing reputation with, with the faction and uh, decide that we're going to take the artifacts um, through betrayal. Just take it. Straight into the backpack. So here we've got uh, different routes for the players to enjoy and, and to use to to flank um, and also navigate around. So each area will have different uh, secondary and tertiary routes of navigation. Um, James was really just trying to scare him there versus that was, actually kill him. That was intentional. Good, good shot, James. <laughs> you, you could also, if you notice real quick, there was a uh, the civilians are actually cowering as opposed to fighting, which is kind of, you'll see another coming up. But it's super cool. So again, here the player will have the choice, you know, do they actually want to interact with the civilians or, you know, does their conscience get better of them? I think James made the right choice there. He was nice, yeah. Uh, one of the things when we play testing this a lot is when you see the uh, uh, the enemy AI kind of fanning out across the terrain like that, it's fantastic to see. It feels really great. 
just seeing the base start to wake up to you and uh, yeah. actually trying to exfiltrate. Also, I know it's under, uh, you know, combat stress, but that yellow grass looks, just looks fantastic. That's how I play. So here, James just wants to get out real quick. hinted to in the first walkthrough. Um, this is where the AA turrets will come alive. And uh, basically, if you're not fast enough, as James isn't, um, with your countermeasures, then they'll take you down. So what we saw there was the player went in and based off their actions, the faction changed against them and then uh, basically became very aggressive. So in this last playthrough, what we'll show you is if the faction is already against you from the very beginning and what are different ways that you can, you can go about it. So here we are in our last walkthrough. Um, since you're all by yourself, we wanted to show the player take a stealthy route versus if you were with friends, you could go in guns blazing. Um, but this allows the player to come in, access the, the outpost from a different side than what we've shown. Uh, it also allows them to clock all the AI and see how they want to approach the problem and see what other secondary or tertiary routes would be open to them, either via the ladder or maybe a possible door. Good night. That was a great shot. Uh, also, one thing we did as well, as Todd said, you know, we, we changed the time of day. Uh, the wind is slightly stronger, so you'll see the uh, gorgeous yellow grass blowing just a little bit more intense uh, than uh, before. Uh, also, what we see here is like um, something to, to imply at the frontier living, you know, maybe the growing crops and vegetables out here, but it also gives a, a kind of like a soft cover approach uh, to the perimeter of the base. Nice. Also, with it being a different time of day, this allows us to show off the AI um, having their 24-hour schedules so that they can they can be in different areas um, when you approach it. So if you approach it at night or you approach it during the morning, you know they'll be doing different things. Whatever is uh, is valid for their schedule. That door's locked, so there's no going through that way. But what the, what James does actually see here as he's scouting out the next AI is, um, you know, just checking the roof line. But uh, as, as I said previously, we wanted as many kind of like um, views in um, to the to base as possible, you know, just so the, the player can con uh, continue to keep context of, of what's inside. But also when you're inside, it allows the player to to have context of where they're at within the actual outpost. And that was a great shot. The uh, the, the AI fell beautifully on the, uh, the already called out beautiful yellow grass and moss. Also, as, uh, as James is looking back, uh, what he's doing is actually uh, making a, a mental map of, you know, possible routes, uh, possible advanced traversal routes on top of the outpost. And we saw the dealer there in the bedroom, just end of the day. 
So with each outpost, there'll be different routes that will be open to the player or closed to the player. So some of them might have ladders on the outside, some of them might not. Some of them might have uh, basically ways to get in through the floorboards, other ones won't, but this is this is just one one version of, you know, many possibilities. So here, the player will take a secondary route of navigation all the way up to the roof, and then from here, um, this allows them to be able to check out any of the AI, also be able to look at any of the interactables um, in the future. You know, if you're uh, if you got a good reputation, maybe you need to go and fix uh, different uh, items on the roof, um, or if you are there for uh, ne nefarious means, then maybe you want to take out the power, and which will then turn, you know, kill the AA turrets, or um, will turn off the the lights in the in the outpost. So it allows the player to interact with different items, and then. Uh, basically create a nice nice little sandbox for them to play in. So here you can see one of those interactables as well as the AI. And just behind these interactables, I've like, seen these these kind of archways. Like right now, this, uh, these are just kind of empty. And uh, to just illustrate like a, like a guard point, in the future, you know, these could be maybe customizable or, you know, they could contain like an AA turret like we saw on, on Demo 1 or it could contain like uh, cargo storage. Uh, basically, we tried to design something that was as flexible as possible. So here we're showing off the looting system as well as the uh, as well as the inventory system. So this will be shipping in 315. This allows bodies to uh, be able to be interacted with and take off the items associated with it. Also, with this um, change, you will no longer have global inventory, so you can't be pulling off weapons that you didn't take with you um, to this location. Uh, everything will be regarding uh, what you carry is is what you um, what you have, and um, so it, it really makes the players think about how they want to approach the problem and then also encourages them to look around and see if uh, the designers and have placed different um, things that they can interact with or are use um, to help uh, get past a, a certain um, route or a certain way that they they maybe didn't bring with them and we'll also be including the uh, I believe in 315 the knickknacks app for your Moby glass so now that you aren't carrying everything on your body and it's not sort of universal inventory, you'll be able to consult this app to see kind of where stuff is being stored and keep it better organized and stuff like that. So here, this allows the player to uh, have a, a quick little puzzle, but just gives them a little bit more interaction and then allows them to go on to a, what I would consider a tertiary route um, versus climbing up the ladder and, and possibly having to deal with the AI or them being, being spotted by them. Also, I think the team did a great job on the planet as well as the outpost. These are really fun to play and, and sneak around in and um, you know, allows uh, allows for many possible, you know, ways of attacking the same problem. What we're seeing here is like uh, James is actually getting up onto uh, through one of these like uh, rooftop storage modules, and it's it's given like the the highest point in the base. So from here, you can actually you know make probably the most informed decisions on you know how how to approach the next problem. You know, we're seeing this guard routine here. And then ultimately, uh, you know, throwing an item to uh, distract the god. Allows them to to go and access new areas. Um, it's a behavior that we're still working out, but at least you're we're seeing like the first iterations and be able to uh, continue to 
optimize it as well as um, make sure that the behavior is working properly. So we just saw that for the first time. It's like the first rooftop uh, airlock hatch. So previously, uh, routes in and out. Uh, if the if if the outside wasn't pressurized, like uh, we wouldn't have this option. But now through that rooftop uh, airlock, you can you can cycle and and then you know infiltrate uh, through the roof. And also, what we're seeing here is um, you know potentially scouting out uh, an advanced traversal up into the rafters. You know, getting on top of some infrastructure and and getting like this overview. Uh, as we go into the uh, the garage module. So here, this is placeholder, but it gives you a, a very, it gives you an idea of, you know, we want to have different interactables, different loot boxes um, laid out around the, the location. So if the players um, explore, they'll be rewarded. You know, we, we want to encourage them looking in every nook and cranny and and enjoying you know what the what the outpost has for them and one of the things that's interesting is these garages won't be vehicle spawn points so so it's not like a big kind of like pad in the middle but it's more like you know if you want to if you want to have your your vehicle there you got to drive it in and park it so here you can see a variety of vehicles just just laid out how the player would have just parked them just gives a much more believable and realistic uh, design. So again, we're just encouraging different navigation, different routes for the player to go and see. Uh, over to the left, back there, and there was a, a possible way of going into floorboards or going underneath the, the outpost. Again, it, those those will be opened up or closed off based off of, you know, just how we want to build the outpost. Not every not every one will be built the same. Um, our philosophy for for these are to to make sure that they each one of them feels unique um, and this is just one way of us us customizing it and, and making each one feel um, different. And so the player won't always be used to the same route. So here, again, we're using the inventory system. We allow the players to go in and uh, if you take out a certain AI, um, they might have different tools or different notes or different items that you'll need um, in order to solve uh, your mission. Interestingly, when we were designing these spaces, um, we knew we wanted these internal uh, uh, airlocks, um, but we knew we needed some sort of like new, uh, like pothole uh, on them, just so before you commit through, before you cycle, you know, you can just double check to see if there's any bad guys on the other side. So we we got some ragdoll bugs. Um, I guess it wouldn't be a Citizen Con without any sort of uh, issues or bugs. So here, like the, previously, the players being, uh, you know, on the roof, they've come down through the main uh, section of the outpost. But here, what the players doing is they're going to the the underfloor section. So these are vents, but they're more like uh, subfloors. So they're meant to feel very dark, very minimal. But you're actually seeing the foundations of these outposts. So inside here, it's uh, the player will need to kind of. Uh, work out how to navigate through them. It's very much a, a like a torch-based experience, you know. Um, and then within here, uh, what the player can actually do is work out uh, roughly where they are in relation to the um, to what's uh, upstairs. And what you see in here, like this light bleeding down through, you know, you can kind of make informed decisions or okay that's where that AI was or uh, right now the player is just underneath that main social space so if you think back like that was that guard in the beginning just just next to the kitchen counter but you know the it we, we've intentionally made these spaces not necessarily like very easy to navigate because you know 
you, there wouldn't be a lot of light down here. You know, um, the player would have to, you know, follow, for example, like James is following the blue wire here. You know, um, you know, making a decision to like, hey, if I follow that blue wire, I'm probably going to get to something interesting or a point where I can actually, you know, exit this supply of space and get back up above. And what I like about them is is basically just the claustrophobic feel of it. And then, obviously, the addition of possible secondary um, or more advanced navigation. So either going into prone or uh, just going full crouch. So here we come out uh, in the bathroom space that's on the other side of the garage. So we're on the opposite side of the outpost from where we just were. It's a good ragdoll. Now the body drag in the shower. So here, um, this is just a different wrapper on a loot box. Uh, in this case, it's a hamper. And so the player will be able to uh, really change outfits and, and adjust the way that they look so that they can walk around the outpost and, and not be, um, be noticed. Uh, there will be kind of a, a certain a certain time limit associated with it. We still need to work out the, the details on how all that will work, but the the goal is to to give them a little bit of um, leeway. And so, if you look the part, maybe you're not scrutinized as as much, and the AI won't uh, um, won't notice you as as quickly. So here we can see back into the social space, but this time on the other side. And then this door will lead directly into the, the habitation room that we saw previously on the outside. Speaking of fun, fun ragdoll physics. That was a great one. So here, um, the player uh, decided to take the, the dealer out instead of actually figuring out how they could open up the safe. Um, so they're going to have to look around the room. They're going to have to interact with the body and possibly see, you know, is there a way for them to actually open it? Um, in other cases, uh, maybe the safe will be hackable um, in the future. And in some cases, it won't be. And then you'll, you'll need to figure out a different way of, of actually opening it. So here we spot a little clue, um, a little note, and uh, you'll notice the, uh, what's fun is like the name on here. If you look back and see the, uh, some of the AI we've been taken out, uh, you may notice some names. Um, so here's the clue for the player. But one of the coolest things for me here is the player is holding an item with the clue and while holding the item, they can seamlessly interact with another item to solve a puzzle. That's awesome. And then here we got a little bug. The player was able to acquire the artifacts and then uh, will be able to do whatever they want with it, either sell it or be able to use it somehow in a future mission. One of the things that was really exciting about watching this kind of back to back to back is is finally getting to see that freedom of choice. 